Here is the flow that we go through as we're conducting a rush analysis and using the WinSteps computer program. We start with a question, a line of inquiry, something we want to know. How well are the children learning? What are they learning? Are they ahead of where we expect? Are they behind? Are there strengths? Are there weaknesses? What can we do to improve their education? Can what, how they perform tell us anything useful? Well, of course it can. But we've got to obtain that information from the children or from wherever else we're obtaining it, from the teachers, for instance. And a convenient way to do that is to conduct tests, conduct surveys, ask people. And what we come out with when we do that is ordinal data. There's something we want, and there's something maybe we don't want. We want correct answers, we don't want incorrect answers. We want people to be successful and happy, we don't want people to be failing and unhappy. So we collect this information. This information is qualitative initially. It's what we want, it's what we don't want. Then it becomes ordered. There's less and more. But then we want to turn that into something that we can think with and develop from. For that, we convert the original observations into scored responses, 0, 1, 2, or 1, 2, 3. And then we take the WinSteps computer program and it converts those scored responses into useful measures. We'll see them in a moment into useful measures, and those measures answer our questions and maybe raise more questions. If, on, if we only find out what we expect to find out, then that's good. But usually we can do better than that. Usually there are unexpected insights, improvements that we can make, changes we can make, so that the net result of going through this cycle isn't just to take us back to the beginning, but to take us back to a better beginning. This is the fundamental cycle of rush measurements. What does WinSteps do for us? Well, WinSteps constructs rulers. It constructs measurement systems so that we can track the progress of a child across the years if we want to or we can find the status the educational status the achievement status of a child at any particular point in time here is the measurement scale it's exactly the same as finding the child's height or the child's weight below it are the benchmark items. These are the items on our test, on our survey, on our instrument, and as a result of our RASH analysis, every item is identified with a difficulty, a challenge that's associated with that item, and each individual, each child who takes the test, composed, comprised of any of these items, can be positioned along the line of progress. And as the years go by, we can see how that child is advancing. This is the fundamental latent variable. This is the Raj dimension. And we can think of this exactly the same way that we think of as height and weight. We're concerned about, is the child growing? Is the child the correct weight for its age? All that sort of information is in this picture and more. Because for any individual child, we can identify unexpected successes when a child gets a difficult item right and unexpected failures when the child gets an easier item wrong. This enables us to tailor the education to the child. We can see where we can encourage the child. We can also see where we need to fill in gaps as the child gets left behind. This is a very human aspect of rush analysis. It's not just a statistical technique 
for organizing data. It's a way of thinking about the world that's useful, that can help us make the world a better place. Now let's look at three examples. Here's the wide range achievement test. This shows three variables, three lines of inquiry. There's word comprehension and spelling and arithmetic. And this is part of the wide range achievement test, which was rash scaled and follows the same principles of a line of inquiry along which each item has a difficulty and each person has an ability, each child, and we can track the children as they develop, looking for strengths and weaknesses, knowing what to teach them next. We're able to see when perhaps there is something missing in their development stages so far that we can fill in. Here is the Lexile map. Lexiles are measures of reading comprehension of passages and it's the same thing. We have the books in this case that the children are reading and here we have the developmental stages of the children and this can go from the various earliest reading all the way through to the most advanced and the most educated. We can track someone's reading across all the years and we can see whether their reading is at the level that is necessary for various stages of educational progress or for various occupations and careers that will come after their school years are over. Variable in a different area. This is in social science. This is tracking fatigue from the most fatigued, tired, to the most energetic and active. And again, there are activities and there are the people who are at that level. And so this can be used in other settings, for instance, clinical settings or sports settings to track how someone's status is. Unlike other statistical techniques which just use whatever numbers happen to arrive and it doesn't really matter whether they make sense or not, Rush insists on building straight lines, unidimensional variables along which we can see progress and about which we can clearly think